Hi, my name is Sam Durkin, and today I'm going to be showing you how to paint a field of bluebells in the forest. Uh, as you see, I've already put the uh, the colour onto the canvas, and we've got this sort of lovely uh, blue colour down here, moving into a, a yellowy green behind it. Uh, it's going to be semi-abstract, so uh, what I call abstract realism. It's uh, it's like an impressionistic style, but it's more modern than that. We're trying to we're trying to bring in some shapes and edges and and really sort of identify the shapes between shapes, if that makes sense. Uh, you'll see as we go along, and uh, I'll crack on with this, and you'll see the next stage. Okay, as you see, um, worked on the canvas quite quickly. What we've done is we've put some sort of black lines in here just to denote where the trees are going to be. We can be, uh, be fairly sort of chaotic about this and just send them up in, in straight lines with a few crossing bits over here and there to give the idea of, of where, where the, the twigs are going to be. Obviously, not every tree goes straight up. There are, there are some going to be with little lines going off to the edges and then the, where the branches sprout out um, and we're imagining that the light is going to come out out of this area here so this is where the, our light source is and it's behind the trees so we left a little bit of a gap here because we're going to have the light pouring through this and I just want to keep that as a sort of reminder that this is so essentially our, our focal our focal point here and because of this the light comes out in this stream thing and we get the shadows off of all of the trees across lovely bluebells in the foreground and this gives us a, 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 a almost depth these these lines are working very much like perspective lines for us and they give us a real strong feeling that there's some depth into the canvas uh, next stage will be to let this dry for a moment uh, and then I'll probably work on the upper level a little bit to bring in some some more leafy sort of colors and merge in with 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 these dark areas and just give us sort of a it will soften it for a moment, but it will come back and it will darken it again. We're essentially, we're working sort of forwards and backwards with the painting. We go, we'll go dark to start with, and then we'll come up from the darkness to the light. Also, normally when you draw, uh, so if you're drawing with a pencil or maybe a pen or something, what we do is we draw the dark areas in, and and we and we sort of sketch out from there. Uh, with a painting, we sort of do a similar. Thing there. What we do though is we do the dark areas and we do them bold and strong. We often go outside the lines at this point. We don't have to be very accurate um, with the painting to start with, especially an acrylic painting. So we do the bold dark areas first to get as much darkness into the canvas as is going to be there. And as we work through the canvas after that, we then come up and we go lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. And sometimes we push back, put some more dark back in now and again when we've, when we've overdone it. But essentially it's, it's dark areas first. Then come to the, then go to the light. Don't draw the don't put the don't worry about the light areas to start with. They'll take care of themselves because they tend to be uh, smaller and easier to work with. Um, unless the painting is particularly light, in which case you might want to go the other direction. But it's still easier to go dark to light. Right, we'll leave this to dry and we'll come back here maybe five minutes time when it is and work on it some more. Okay, as you see, uh, we filled in the background behind the trees and merged in with, with the trees. So we've got a sort of a layers building up, making very abstract, interesting shapes in the background here. Uh, if we come in very nice and close, you'll see they're just paint marks to just give an impression that we've got trees behind and there's depth and there's 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 something happening deep within the forest here and these blurry lines and browns and these sort of yellowy greens uh, really bring out a strong feeling that we're looking at a forest now as you notice um, while we've got yellowy green here we've also got uh, some orangey browns in here as well because it's very rare for um, us to see pure green especially when we're looking in nature uh, so we've mixed in in some red in there uh, just gonna 
the touch. So if you look at my, my, uh, my palette here, what I've got is I've got the red here in the middle, and I've placed some blue on this side, and some yellow on that side. So what we've got is we've got this sort of yellow green thing coming around here, and then occasionally what I'm doing is I'm, I'm touching into this, this red. Now, if we're not careful, this red uh, will turn us into brown. So what we do is we come in and bring, bring it back into this, this yellow here that is already slightly green. And we'll get, well, it's not possible really to get a, to get a greeny red. We can get, get something that's sort of reminiscent of it. Also picking up paint off of the canvas from the previous painting. While I waited for it to dry for a while, and, and you definitely must do so, what we're doing is we, we're picking up some of the paint from the, the previous can, from the previous paint strokes. Um, as you notice, it makes a very misty kind of painting because what we're doing is we're painting over with quite a. F <laughs> we're not using too much water, but we're not we're not making it absolutely opaque. So when we're painting the brush strokes, we can still see painting from beneath and that's essentially the the layers of the painting building up and we're using this technique all, we'll use this technique all the way through that painting to keep building up layers over the top of previous layers and eventually this will give us a strong impressionistic style painting because we will knock the layers down by going over the top of them. And we're not worrying too much that we're going over them because uh, we can come and sort them out later. Um, but right now, uh, it just gives a, it gives a kind of a, a more, um, a more sort of almost natural, the way we view the world is that uh, uh, our eyesight is very rarely um, precision. Uh, much of what we see happens in our own minds. And, we're trying to give that that almost effect of how we see the world. Now, this is how I see things when I'm looking at the world. How you see things may be a little bit different. So always make sure you, when you're painting, you're using your own experience of, of your vision of, of, of how you really do see. And I would suggest you go out, um, possibly sketching, although it's not absolutely necessary to do the sketching, but, but when you go out to actually at any given moment that you can, maybe sat at a bus stop or, or just waiting somewhere or in the park, um, to look, to, to actually just sit one day and, and just look, look at it. Um, it's very rare for us in our modern lives, I think. Often we're very busy and we're trying to keep it hectic. Sometimes it's a good idea just to sit, sit and just take in, take in the, take in the view. Um, I think it's maybe it's, it's why it's a good idea to go around art galleries or to own paintings because it gives us a chance to just look and in, in looking um, we, reach, we reach a place in our minds that um, isn't easily obtainable in, in, a, in a hectic busy life um, so when you're out, out and about take a moment take a moment next time you're out just sit down and just watch, watch what's going on, take it in, and uh, you'll, you'll, you'll find that it will come into your paintings much better, you'll, you'll find that, that that ability to look at the world and just take it in, notice the lines, notice the shapes, try, try to widen your, your vision, instead of focusing on just one little bit at a time, widen it out, widen it out all the way out, so that you look at the whole, whole thing all together, and uh, I think it will improve improve your paintings as much as it's improved mine. Right, well, anyway, we're going to leave this to dry again for a little while. Um, and I think the next stage, so I'm going to, I'm going to work on these, these dark areas that are in the foreground a little bit more as they're, they're a little bit broken currently and they need, they need some strength. Then um, we get to the proper meat of the painting where we start to put in some light. Um, because we, we've, we're making it darker at the moment, they were getting darker and darker and darker, and then slowly, well, these dark areas will become quite defined. And uh, the next stage after that is we'll put some light on, because currently we've only put darkness into this painting, and, and it's when we start putting the light on that it really comes to life. So working through the painting, 
We're using very, very strong, bold, abstract strokes to build up a picture that gives an impression that there is bluebells here. Um, and it feels like there, from the distance you're seeing it, when we come back, we feel like we're looking at bluebells. This, this painting feels very realistic in many ways. But um, as we come in, we'll see that these areas really haven't got anything to them at all. They're just, they're just areas of colour and shape placed in just the right places that give us that, that impression. very much working to keep the picture fairly realistic. Okay, I just want to give that impression that these the light is coming through these trees. Now currently there isn't enough light coming from behind here. These 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 this is too dark at the back and we'll work through that in a bit but currently I'm just working on the on the blues here because if I mix too many colors at once on, on, on the palette they'll get muddied and, and we don't really want that. We've already got a, a feeling that these, these bluebells are quite good at the moment. Uh, we probably will highlight a few, um, get a bit more detail coming into these, maybe in the foreground here because uh, it's still a little bit vague. But next step, background. This needs to be worked on quite a lot. This There's a lot of light to come through these trees. And I feel that there needs to be a real strong, bright light here just to make this here, which is sort of getting quite bright and probably make this even brighter. I may even bring this up almost to white towards the back there, but make that light come through this really strong, give us a real powerful, powerful effect towards the end. Okay, well, I'm gonna leave that to dry for a moment, take a little bit of a, a little break, maybe have a cup of tea, um, look at it for a bit, sit back, take it in, and think about, about where I'm, I'm gonna put the gaps and the spaces in between these trees to give full ideas of of uh, light coming through so there's going to be probably I mean I've been so far I've been working just so you can see uh, with this two inch brush okay now I like working with large large brushes it actually helps uh, keep the abstract feeling and keep a real sense of uh, proportion uh, when, when you're working if you if you work with a small brush one um, as you're working, especially with acrylic, as you're working across the canvas, your paints are going to dry out and um, the colour you mixed over here is not going to match the colour that was mixed over here. So you need to use quite a large brush just to get that effect. Um, it's, it's a good idea to do that almost all the way through the painting. Keep, keep the same size of brush if you can. Um, but sometimes just sometimes you do need to go slightly smaller and I'll probably using uh, this brush uh, which is about well, it's about a one inch brush so it's about half the size um, I would tend not to go smaller than that myself uh, if you want to get more more detail into your painting uh, towards the end if, you, if that's if that's what you're going for um, you could go smaller um, but actually, I probably, if I could, if I get a larger brush than this, if I get a one and a half inch um, quality um, painting brush. I'm... See, this is a high quality uh, painting brush. It's, it's called a Skyflow brush. Generally, it's used uh, for doing washes in watercolour. Um, uh, this one, too. They're both acrylic um, brushes, though. They're, they're both designed for acrylics. Um, I wouldn't go for anything other than than, a, than, than an acrylic brush. If you use uh, natural fibres, they tend to uh, fall out. 
uh, quite quickly with acrylics. Uh, so use a, use a synthetic brush if you can, okay? Uh, just I just bought one of these recently to find out what a normal two inch house brush would be like to use. Um, if you look at the uh, the difference in the quality, okay, these, look at the bristles on that. Rough, they're gonna make a, a lot of a lot of motion on the canvas, a lot of a uh, lot of mess. And if you like using that, go for it. If you if you if you can find a use for that, then then do it. I, I'm I'm actually I'm experimenting with it, see if I can get anything from it. Um, but this one, if you look at the uh, the bristles here, look at that. Smooth, it produces a nice, nice finish. You get a nice, there's a nice tight edge there. So if I wanted to put lines onto the canvas, I can. It remains in good quality throughout the whole painting. I probably replace these every hundred paintings or so. Uh, I do a lot of paintings, so yeah, I'd say maybe every 50. 50 or so because what happens is eventually because I leave mine in <laughs> I'm a dreadful painter I break one of the major rules of this which is that they say never leave your paint paintbrushes in the water well <sighs> there's a there's a reason for that and it's because that you worry that the the tips are going to bend by being left in water um, well the flat edge brushes that I use all the time that doesn't really happen they sit they sit in the water but the other the great thing about leaving them in the water is they don't dry out now you get a brush that dries out I'm just gonna find one yeah there's one that's dried out okay eventually this one's not too bad I've washed it really well but eventually paint builds up at the bottom of the uh, at the bottom here fills fills the whole thing with paint and eventually you're only using like this much of the brush and the rest of it is, is static and it's just like using a stick eventually so um, with preference um, I leave my brushes in the water but dangerous thing of doing that is eventually they fall to pieces see look at that but it takes quite a long time and if you're painting every single day it's not so much of a problem and frankly you're going to replace your brushes eventually anyway and if they go like this one with the, with the paint getting stuck in them you're going to replace them a lot faster so um, I actually suggest leave them in the water come back the next day make sure the water's clean I mean don't leave it in the dirty water because that's just going to go nasty but um, leave them some clean water overnight or wrap them up maybe in some cling film or something just keep them damp don't don't let them dry out don't let that paint set in there because once it's set once acrylic paint's set it's it's, it's as hard as plastic and it's not going anywhere. Um, you'd have to use some major industrial cleaners to get those brushes clean. Okay, as you see, we're in the, in the final stages of the painting now. Just uh, getting that real strong, bright, bright light in behind. Trees here. You see we're using quite Right, well, I'm really very happy with how this is coming on. That needs to sort out in a minute, but uh, the rest of the piece is, is really strong. We've got a feeling of trees and, and a feeling of the, of the bluebells here. Um, the whole piece is, is extraordinarily abstract. I'll probably go over um, later with a larger brush, just emphasize some of the bits. Um, maybe do a little bit of a wash on it just to, just to soften up some of the edges, some of these shapes. But um, no, I, I like that, That's it's a, it's a strong picture. Uh, the areas down here maybe need a little bit more work. But uh, I think as you see, we're, from, from the from distance, we really are getting extraordinarily strong feeling. It's almost like you, you could walk into this, uh, this piece. And if you come up close, as you see here, 
um, every every little area, every bit here is, is just is just paint, and we can really see that it's paint, and that that makes it. Um, I think it makes it so much more wonderful, and because we realise that our, our mind is is filling in all these gaps for us, and it's, it, with we are really imagining that we're seeing this painting, even though. Um, it is it's really clearly just paint on the, on the canvas. You have to step back from it and, and look at it. When up close here, we, we're only seeing the paint. It's, sometimes that's, that's hard when you're working on abstract, that you can just see the paint strokes and there's a temptation um, to put more detail in than you need. But when we come back, we step back from it, and we look back from it, almost just, almost, 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 almost just close your eyes a little bit, just squint. Um, when, you, when you're looking, uh, and you get the whole, you get the whole image coming through. I personally, I take my glasses off, and uh, that gives me, that gives me much more. Cl that's almost, strangely enough, it almost gives me a clearer, a clearer vision of what we're, of what I'm painting. Okay, well, um, I think I'm almost finished with this. There's, there's a few bits and pieces I'd like to, I'd like to do more to it, but uh, I'm going to leave this to rest for a bit and uh, take some time, look at it, see look, what I find the areas that I think are a little bit weak, uh, maybe need working on a bit. I think maybe possibly some of these trees could do with uh, darkening up, especially the base here, this one, feeling a little weak on that. Um, but uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think we're, we're, pretty much, we're pretty much finished here. There's a real, there's a real sense of uh, that these trees are actually, are actually tree-like. Um, in all in all the stages there, we've, what we've done is we've, we've broken little patterns into there, that, that kind of shapes and the patterns that that uh, the trees make with the light coming through them. We're not we're not painting the branches. Um, we're painting the light that comes through the through the branches. Okay, and uh, that's that's really how to work on that. And just you, you just just think about painting the light uh, rather than the objects. Okay. You always think about painting the light rather than the objects. Um, from certainly a painting um, that's all about light. This is clearly all about light. We've, we've got this light pouring through these trees, and, and uh, it, it does something. I think it, it works. It works to hit us um, deep, deep within us. There's something, there's something kind of, uh, something kind of wonderful about seeing light going through trees. But, uh, it, it just reminds us uh, of our connection to. To ourselves and to the planet and to the to where we exist it's all, it's all, it all I don't know, it makes me, me feel connected anyway right well I'm gonna leave that to dry and uh, enjoy it for a bit before I work on any more of it we'll see if I will see if I do anything more to this I, I might just leave it and come back and and say that's that's good enough okay we finally finished as you see uh, not a lot has changed since the last uh, last time we uh, we looked at it, added a little bit of extra dark into to some of the places I felt needed it, brightened up um, the light here. I may work on that a little bit more because I still want that, that white area to be perfectly white, which is actually quite hard to achieve when you've been painting because um, all your brushes end up holding some of the paint and trying to get, get that onto the canvas. That's finished now then. Okay, so what I like is pouring out the trees. We really feel the strength of that coming through. Uh, there's no there's no real detail in any of it. If we come in nice and close, we see that uh, there's lots of abstract little shapes that uh, are all forming here. And our brain adds it all up and we look at it and we go, oh look, trees, because that's what these shapes, that's what these shapes tell us that these are, which is, which I think is wonderful. Um, but we can also see quite clearly that it's all just paint, and that that's, that makes that makes uh, that makes painting for me uh, more magical because uh, it reminds us that that's that's what we're looking at. Right. Okay. Well, hope you've enjoyed uh, this little journey uh, through and making this landscape, and um, hope you go away and uh, try try one yourself or something similar. Uh, if you've uh, if you've enjoyed my uh, painting demonstration, give it a thumbs up share it with some friends um, and uh, join my channel and see some more that uh, I'll be producing soon.